Bhutan, the land of the Thunder Dragon. Located between China and India, this small kingdom in the heart of the Himalayas is truly remarkable. It has a vast, unspoiled natural beauty, but there is something else that sets apart Bhutan from the rest of the world. This is a nation where gross national happiness is more important than gross national product. But what is that about? The true Shangri-La. Bhutan was completely cut off for centuries from the outside world, fiercely protecting its ancient traditions and culture. This isolation has made this tiny country of roughly 700,000 people unique. Bhutan today is slowly catching up with the modern world. Internet and television were introduced in 1999, and the first daily newspaper was launched just last year. 2008 was an important year for Bhutan. The one Shak monarchy has been in power since 1907, but Bhutan became a parliamentary democracy with its first elections last year and it was the king himself who promoted the elections. He wanted to give up his absolute power and give it back to the people, something that many Bhutanese didn't understand and was reluctant to because they love and respect the monarchy. The king had to go personally to the countryside to explain the people the importance of democracy and encourage them to vote. <laughs> The monarchy has not only promoted democracy, but also gross national happiness over gross national pride. The important foundations of gross national happiness, like, I mean, I should say there are four. So that's uh, one is good governance, second is uh, socio-economic development, equitable socio-economic development, and uh, third is preservation of your, our tradition and culture, and fourth is uh, conservation of the environment. Before I came to Bhutan, I thought that gross national happiness was just a colorful slogan they used to promote the country. But after spending a couple of days in Bhutan, I had realized how important and serious it is for Bhutanese people. Bhutanese people are very proud of their culture and traditions. Although they are stores with Western clothes, Bhutanese wear with pride the national dress. This men wear go, so it's a common uh, everyday wear. We, uh, we wear this to school and to government offices. You know, it's part of preserving our tradition and culture. Bhutan also cares deeply about nature. The country has a stunning scenery and only spoiled natural beauty that takes your breath away. It has vast, pristine forests that could be exploited for profit, but it's written in the Constitution that 60% of the country's forests must be preserved for all years to come. Bhutan has also some of the highest peaks in the world that have not yet been explored. Because for spiritual reasons and for environmental reasons, because people believe spirits reside in those mountains and if you disturb the spirits you're going to have bad harvest and natural disasters. And environmental reasons, as everybody knows, there's going to be I mean, a lot of trash if technical mountain climbing is allowed. Animals are also loved and protected in Bhutan. Every November 12th, in this valley, locals do a festival to welcome the arrival of the black-necked cranes that come to Bhutan from Tibet escaping from the winter. In here, homes use solar panels instead of electricity because people don't want to scare off the birds with the wires. And that's not all. Years ago, the king decided to shut down the only zoo and set the animals free because keeping them captive was against their Buddhist values. Bhutan is definitely like any other country I have visited. It seems to have achieved the perfect balance between spirituality and development. A tiny nation, a remarkable country. I feel I have found the earthly paradise of the Himalayas.